Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here uh, at Moody Methodist Church, and it is just so good uh, to be in worship together this morning. Uh, Pastor Alicia, as many of you know, is still out on vacation having a grand old time, and we are blessed this morning to welcome the Reverend Dr. Charles Milliken uh, to be with us. Uh, he is the vice president over, uh, one of the vice presidents over at Houston Methodist Hospital uh, in the spiritual care and value integration department, so all of the chaplains and that that serve uh, that wonderful real community of all those Methodist hospitals. He is over and we're grateful for that. Uh, but many of you may know him from uh, being the senior pastor here from 1993 to 2001. Did I get that right? Yes. Uh, and uh, really helping oversee the uh, real building and expansion of the church from just the sanctuary in a little corner, he said, over there, uh, all the way to the Christian Life Center and everything that's over there. And so we're grateful uh, for that ministry that we today benefit from and uh, uh, getting to hear a message from uh, Dr. Milliken. So we're all excited. Uh, with that in your bulletin, I want to make mention of two things happening. Uh, there you got this uh, small handout. We want to encourage you to sign up for our Pray For Me campaign. Uh, it's one of the things you'll hear a little more about. Uh, but we have a goal of being able to cover uh, all of the kids uh, in our church, truly really all of the kids from uh, infant, just born, all the way through college age in prayer and line them up with three or more prayer partners uh, who are praying for them really through the course of of their life. Um, and we uh, hope that this is one of the ways that we can do ministry uh, across the generations, right? And we want to encourage you uh, to sign up for that. You, we made it real easy. You can just fill that out and drop it off in the offering bucket uh, when that comes by. And you'll hear more about that in the announcement videos that come in just a second. Uh, the second thing I want to mention uh, is today at 11 o'clock, uh, in the bridge over in the CLC there, our youth and children uh, have prepared their summer musical uh, over called. So all this week, Tracy and Joanna have been pulling late nights, working with the kids, grueling rehearsals. Uh, it is as good as Hamilton, I have heard, uh, at least. Uh, Tony award-winning musical. Uh, but they'll be over there performing that. So if you all want, you can stay through this worship service. It'll be wonderful. Go to your Sunday schools, uh, get some coffee, and then at 11 o'clock, you're invited to head over there and watch uh, the kids perform. There is no uh, such thing as too much church, people. Uh, it is not a bad thing, but uh, we want to invite you to that uh, or be in prayer for our kids who uh, will be performing in that. Uh, with that, I invite you to turn your attention to the screen for just a couple of other announcements of things happening in the life of the church. Monday, August 15th. Join us here at the church for our mobile food distribution. If you didn't know already, this is the time where we, in partnership with the Galveston Food Bank, provide food to families right here in Galveston uh, who are in need. All sorts of food like fresh produce, meat, dairy, milk, whatever you can think of uh, comes from the Houston Food Bank uh, right down here to Galveston to get into the homes of families. It is a wonderful opportunity to join them in the mission to really end hunger here in Galveston. Uh, we always are in need of volunteers and we can need your help this Monday. Uh, if you can join us, we'll start at about 3.30 uh, with bagging and beginning to get in order, uh, things in order, and then we'll have cars come through and we'll take those different boxes and put them into the back of cars. We'll get about 200 to 300 families coming through um, this month and really every month. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. I hope you can join us. Uh, you do us a great favor by signing up, and you can do so at moody.org slash register. Uh, it just takes a second, and you're welcome to bring yourself uh, and kids in second grade or older. It's a great way to serve as a family. So I hope to see you there. Pray for me. 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 Hi everyone, I'm Zoe. How would you like to pray for me this coming school year? Or a kid just like me? Like us! Well, you can. This August, you can commit to pray for a child that goes to our church. It's only for a year. Then you can get a new kid next year. 
need a little more help making up prayers? Buy one of these. It will teach you. And as you know, practice makes perfect. Parents, please sign up your children. Who can receive prayer? 24 years old and younger. Baby's on the way too. Adult, please sign up to be a prayer champion. 18 years old and older. And older. And older. And older. Register today at moody.org slash register. There are all sorts of wonderful things happening in the life of the church, and we want to encourage you, uh, if you want to know more about anything on that connection card in your bulletin there, that little perforated card, uh, you can fill that out, and there are all sorts of great boxes you can check. If there is something you would like to know more about, the easiest way is to do that, and we'll get in touch with you uh, about whatever it is you want to know, whether it's plugging in uh, with an opportunity uh, to serve, or joining a small group, or a Sunday school, or a Bible study, uh, whatever it is that's going on, we want to help connect you to that. And so I want to encourage you to fill that out, uh, fill out your prayer requests on the other side, and you can drop that off in the offering bucket uh, as it comes around. Uh, now, I want to invite you all to stand and join me this morning in our call to worship. Let us worship God who is rich in mercy, who makes alive when we are dead who gives us new life out of great love for us. Let us worship God. And join us in our opening hymn, number 61, Come Thou Almighty King. asked again today that we just select hymns out of the red hymnal this morning. Who has a special one? Ed, I already know what it is. 147. Oh, you surprised. 147. All things bright and beautiful. We'll do the first and last stanzas. 147. Everyone. 
together now. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little Yes, sir. 277. Tell me the stories of Jesus. Let's do the first and last stanzas, verses 1 and 3. Tell me the stories of Jesus. Yes, ma'am. 387? 389. Let me find it. Be 
Amen, amen. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, I want to invite any of our children forward uh, for the children's time. If you want to join me uh, up here, you're welcome. Let's see, Kyrus is making her way up here. Aria is two. Anyone who feels like a child at heart is also welcome to join us. Take a seat right here. Morning. How are you doing? Good. Kairos? Good job. Good job. Use the rail. You got it? Want to take a seat right here? Thank you. You are... You need to teach my daughter some lessons, honestly. Zago, are you free? That. All righty. Well, I got a question for you guys. What sort of things make you happy? Birthday. Your birthday? Ooh, when's your birthday? February 27th. February 27th. Ooh, that's a good day. Mine's June 28th, yeah. We got a while to go before our birthdays, don't we? Yeah, but it's okay. Christmas is coming. Presents are coming soon. That. Kairos, are there things that make you happy? Yeah. Maybe. Coco Melon? Daniel Tiger? Yeah? Eleanor loves Daniel Tiger. Your mom and dad, probably? Yeah. Um, do, let's see, do puppies make you happy? Yeah? Yeah? Who doesn't like puppies? What about, you have two puppies? What are their names? Snowflake and Athena. Ooh, that's a good name. Our dog's named Bella. Yeah, she's a border collie. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, do vegetables make you happy? Yeah? Ooh, impressive, right? Could you all say that? Tomato. Oh, tomatoes are my favorite, too. They're the best, right? Uh, I like broccoli, too. Right? Kairos, do you have any favorite foods? Yeah? Mm hmm. It's okay. Um, are there things that don't make us happy, though? Yeah? Maybe things like eating too much candy. Does that make you happy? Sometimes. What if you get a stomach ache, though? You have so much. That doesn't happen to you? Just wait. Just wait. Yeah, right. We don't like it when we get a stomach ache. You don't like the last day of school? No. Do you like the first day of school? Yeah, that's coming up soon. That's exciting, right? You're going to second grade? That's awesome, right? Well, there are things that make us happy, you know, like our vegetables and our puppies and our birthdays. Um, and there are things that maybe don't make us very happy, you know, like eating too much candy or the last day of school or uh, when dad turns off the television when they're in the middle of watching something and we have to go to nap time, even though we don't want to go to nap time, right? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Eleanor, too, doesn't like that either. Yeah, but there's only one thing I think that gives us really long lasting happiness, right? Our birthday comes and goes every year. One day, you may not have to go to school anymore. You'll graduate and be done and you won't have any more first or last days of school. One day, maybe there won't be enough candy for us to eat. Uh, but there's only one thing that can maybe give us lasting happiness. Do you know what that is? It starts with a J and ends with an Jesus. Jesus. G good job, yeah, Jesus, right? Uh, thinking about Jesus, right, that Jesus gives us true happiness when we're connected to God, whether it's coming to church or getting to go to Sunday school or maybe going to VBS, you gotta go to VBS, right? Or some of these other places where we get to learn about God when we get to pray together and draw close to God and learn about the purposes and the, the gifts that God has given us, and we, when we get to put them into use, that helps us give us a deeper, longer-lasting happiness than maybe some of these shorter things, right? God's kind enough to give us birthdays and delicious candy and even more delicious vegetables, um, but also God gives us a happiness that can last even longer than that, and that's being connected to Jesus. You don't like naps? I don't like naps either. So we can put that over there on the bad list, all right? Uh, will you say a prayer with me? Could we pray? Kyra, do you want to pray? Let's say a prayer. Good job. Let's put our hands together. Let's say, holy God, uh, we give thanks for the gifts that you have given us. 
like our birthday and candy and vegetables and all those other fun things. Uh, but we give thanks that you have given us a gift that lasts even longer and that is even deeper than those things. And that's the gift of your son and being connected uh, to life through him. And so we pray that uh, we can continue to be connected to that in all the different ways of our service, through our songs, through the sermon, through communion, um, all those ways that you invite us to receive that. We give thanks for this morning, and we say these things in your son's most precious name. Amen. All right, you guys can take your seats. Thanks. Amen. Do you want to say it? You can do the prayer with me, Kairos, if you want. Yeah? Okay. I think Zago's free for grandparent, uh, grandkid lessons, parenting lessons, behavior, all those things. Thank you, Zaga. Uh, with that, I want to remind y'all that on the back of that connection card that you, uh, I know, registered your attendance with uh, is a prayer card. And there's anything that we uh, as a church, whether it's our church staff or uh, our prayer team that meets every week could be in prayer for and lifting you up in prayer, uh, we want to invite you to take the time to fill that out, uh, that card out. It can go onto our published prayer list uh, that's printed in the bulletin each week or our unpublished prayer list that just our staff and our prayer team prays over. I know that we all come with different things that are weighing heavy on our hearts, different burdens, situations in our world and in our neighborhoods uh, that weigh us down. And so I want to invite us to a time of silent prayer where we can name those things and lift them up before God. And then I'll bring us together in prayer. Uh, but let's pray to God this morning. Oh, good and gracious God, uh, we give thanks for every day that you give us, uh, every day of life and connection, uh, family and friendship, uh, every day we get to uh, spend with one another uh, is a gift and a good day from you. Uh, we give thanks for this opportunity to come together in worship, um, to be able to sing songs of praise to you, uh, to lift up the burdens and the things that weigh heavy on our heart. Uh, we give thanks for the freedom and ability to do that. Uh, we pray this morning for all of those who are on our prayer list. We lift up the situations, and the things that they find themselves in. Those who are in the hospital, uh, waiting for tests, waiting for good news, maybe waiting for a moment of peace and someone to speak a word of comfort and hope into their lives. We pray that your hope uh, can break in to even the darkest of places. Uh, we continue to pray uh, for situations uh, around work. We know many people have just stressful jobs and uh, things ebb and flow and those people who might find themselves in stressful seasons wondering uh, if this too will ever pass. Pray that peace that surpasses all understanding, the grace that you give to each of us. Uh, we pray for those who are maybe looking for purpose, uh, asking that question of, Lord, what should I be doing? What would you have me do? 
pray that they can see the gifts that you have deeply gifted them with, that you have uniquely gifted them with, and find the ways that they can put those uh, to use here in this community, in this church, for the betterment of your world. Uh, we pray uh, for the word that Dr. Milliken will bring us. May it open our eyes and our hearts uh, to hear your scripture and your love for us in new uh, and refreshing ways. We pray that as a church, we can continue to be a community that can deeply impact the neighborhood around us uh, for the better. Uh, we pray that through all of the ministries of our church, whether it's through our children's ministry, our youth ministry, uh, the things that happen outside the walls of this place, those opportunities for service, that all of those can be a blessing uh, to this island and beyond. And we close by saying that prayer. Our uh, Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, friends, I want to invite uh, our ushers forward uh, for the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, and as they do that, I want to invite uh, you all into prayer with me just one more time. Let us pray. God, uh, we give thanks that every gift that you have given us uh, comes from you. Uh, and we recognize that we give now, not out of, out of a sense of guilt or of obligation, uh, but out of a recognition of your grace, of all that you have blessed us with. So may these tithes and offerings be a blessing beyond this place and into this community through all the ministry and work of the church and of these people. We say these things in your son's most holy and precious name. Amen. But one.
be seated. The scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 20. The vision of Isaiah son of Amos which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uriah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah kings of Judah. Hear O hero heavens and listen O earth for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offering is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath calling of convocation cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove your evil deeds from my, before my eyes. Cease to do no evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. If your sins are like scarlet, will they become like snow? If they are red like crimson, will they become like wool? 
If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel today is from Luke chapter 12, verses 32 to 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your heart is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are awaiting their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he come and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also ask and be ready to reply, for the man, son of man is coming in an hour you do not expect. The word of God for the people of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Get it right. And keep your lamps lit. How's your soul? How's it working for you? How are things going? John Clifton, the CEO of the Gallup Corporation, has just written a book called The Blind Spot, how leaders have engaged the unhappiness of people in the world. He says 3.3 billion people hate their job. 300 million have a good one. It says 2 billion people are persons who have lived in a community and hate it so much they wish they possibly could leave it forever. He also had another number of over 1 billion people who are so dissatisfied with life that they're just willing to end it. Also, in 2020, three out of 10 people worldwide experienced some kind of food shortage. And he also says that 300 million people do not have a single friend. You know, it's interesting the times in which we live. How do we find true happiness? Where do you find it? Is it something that's genetically given to you or is it something that you kind of fabricate? John Leland wrote a book not long ago called Happiness is a Choice. He took 12 people that he knew in the older group of society and talked to them about how they found happiness in their life. And he discovered that many times happiness was a choice, something they chose to do. It's very difficult to do at times. But at the same time, it's very important for us to understand it. When I was a young man, my father gave me some advice. He said, Charles, pray to be wealthy, not rich. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, have the wealth of a good family. Have the wealth of a good name. Have the wealth of good friends. Have the wealth of having a life of which you're satisfied. He says, not everyone who's rich is wealthy. And I've discovered that's true. Certainly, there's a certain need of possessions that we all have in order to be satisfied. But how much is enough? How much do we really need? In Isaiah's word today, he talks very candidly about the fact that he's not satisfied. He's not satisfied with life as it's been. He's, through his prophet Isaiah, he's saying, look, this business of giving these sacrifices that you've given, this is not enough for me. You can't just go through the motions anymore. I want something different. And what are the things that he said? He said, wash yourselves, cease to do evil, do good. He says, defend the orphan, protect the widow, do justice. Those are the things he wants. God wants more. We want more. 
I'm on a panel right now at the Houston Methodist Hospital. We're in search for a new chief executive officer for human resources. The person we've had there has done a wonderful job, but now she's retired. And now we're going through the process of hiring a new chief executive officer for human resources for the 30,000 employees of Houston Methodist Hospital. We have five wonderful candidates that we've been a part of. I've interviewed three. I've got two more to go. And what we're discovering is that in this period of the pandemic, we've had a variety of things that have happened in our lives, and many people have left their jobs. Many of them have left their job not knowing where they're going next, but they just left their jobs. And it's called in society called the great resignation. You've heard that. The thing that we're discovering is that work balance, work-life balance is no longer the key. We're discovering that it needs to be work integrated into everything else you do. That's what makes real happiness is that you're not just doing a job, but you're able to understand that it has purpose, it has meaning. It means that you're giving yourself and your time into something that truly makes a difference. See, that's what God wants. God wants that with his faith. He wants that with his people. He wants that with the sacrifices. He wants that with the gifts. That's what he's looking for. And that's what Isaiah is saying. It's not enough to be in church. Not enough just to give. Not enough just to do this, do that. He says, I want something that's transformative. We've looked at different surveys of trying to evaluate effectiveness in ministry. It's not just numbers. But how many lives are transformed? How many things are done that have made a difference? Some years ago when I was the pastor of the Seabrook Methodist Church before coming to Moody, I had a wonderful person in my church named Dr. Tom Clark. He was a respected member of the University of Houston faculty. He came to me one day early in my ministry and he said, look, I want to be very clear with you. If you need the garden weeded or you need a tree cut down, call me. But if it's a committee, don't call me. I don't want to be on a committee. You know, being at the University of Houston, he's been on a lot of committees. <laughs> he said, oh, no, don't do that. Lord bless those who are on committees. Believe me, we need them. But he was very clear about that with his life. He said, look, I've done the committee thing. Just give me something I can do, something I can see. You know, oftentimes I find at home I do so many things that I just don't see. I plant the tree that other people sit in the shade in, right? And sometimes I just like to do something where I can see it. So I have a habit of uh, detailing cars. That's my job. I love to detail a car. That's hard work, but when I do it, I see it. You know, it's amazing the kinds of things that we find ourselves that leads to true happiness and can make a difference. I remember years ago, I was your pastor here. I came 29 years ago as the pastor of this church, left 21 years ago. It's hard to believe that time has passed so well things have happened but so many things happened during that period those eight years I was here that was so transformative for me and for what I think was for this church I remember there was a afternoon Dave and Donna Lang came by the church he of course is a tremendous carpenter facilities manager of course at UTMB does all the facilities UTMB Donna of course there's no stranger with Donna Lang and we all know that uh, but as it turned out, I was trying to find something that we could do in the ministry of the church. Not just a committee, but something. And all of a sudden, I looked at them, and I saw carpentry, I saw people. And out of that conversation came Moody Menders. It's such a transformative kind of thing that happened. But you know, one of the things that happened in Moody, members that, Moody Menders that changed was there was a Saturday not long after that when um, they were working on a house. And it was not too far from the church here. And uh, Dr. Bob Johnson was sitting on the roof. Dr. Johnson was a faculty member at UTMB, worked with children with the disease of the light. And um, he and Diane had just started coming to the church. And uh, so he decided to give some time on that Saturday and he's up there working on the roof. And as it turned out, we have a lot of homeless people here in Galveston, and there's this one very well-known gentleman who was pushing his bicycle down the street. And they looked down and saw that uh, he had two flat tires. And so 
the good people that we are, we decided to take his bicycle down to Brian's bike shop, which was at 39th and Broadway at the time, and uh, got him two new tires and brought it back. And all of a sudden, they looked at him, this uh, homeless man, and he had shoes on, but the tops only, the soles were gone. And so Bob Johnson overheard that conversation. He got off the roof, gave the homeless man his shoes, and worked the rest of the day in his sock feet. Now, the next Sunday, the next day, that was Saturday, everybody in church was talking about how Bob Johnson gave his shoes away. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book some years ago called The Tipping Point. What makes things happen? You know, how can you be able to create it? We talked about mission in the church for years. All those kinds of things, how do you make it work? That was the tipping point. Bob Johnson giving his shoes away on Saturday ignited this church in mission. And we've done it all around the world. But we've done it here, right here in Galveston. You know, it's amazing to me how you find real happiness in what you do. And that's what God's saying. Don't just give me the normal stuff. I want the good stuff. I want what it is that you've got deep down in your soul. I want what has work for you that also works for me. Cease to do evil. Do good. Make it a little further, he says. Wash your hands. Wash them. Protect the orphan. Protect the widow. Feed the poor. Do what you can to make a difference. You know, it's important for us to get a picture of Isaiah and the world in which he lived. But it's also a time for us to get a picture of where we are in our world. How is your soul? How are you doing? What's working for you? What's not working for you? What do you need to do in order to deepen the relationship? In today's gospel in Luke, we hear powerful words. Keep alert, stay awake, keep your lamp lit, be ready, be service for action. You know, that's not unusual for us in Galveston. We know the dates, June 1st through November 30th, hurricane season. We have our buckets, we have our papers, we have batteries, we have food, we have water, we know. And you know what's amazing? We remember hurricane dates the way we remember our children's birthdays, don't we? So, 1900, the great storm. 6,000 to 8,000, 12,000 people lost on this island. September 11th, 1960, Hurricane Carla. June 6th, 2001, Tropical Storm Alicia. September 12th, 1908, Ike. Five years ago, Hurricane Harvey. We're still recovering. Are we ready? Are our lamps lit? Are we ready for action? You know, I think it's important to think about those things. You know, life is short. It's amazing how quickly time passes. And yet at the same time we live as if we live forever, not forget, not sometimes forgetting that sometimes we need to understand that seconds make minutes, minutes makes hours, hours make days. Days make weeks, weeks make months, months make decades, decades make years. But as Christians, we understand that life and death are understood in new perspective. We know that death is not a period, it's a semicolon. We have a life here and we have a life to come. I was reminded of this some time back. Uh, Manuel Coriella did this um, gallery of all the preachers on the wall behind us. You've seen it. 
I walked by there just a few minutes ago and remembered it when he was putting it up. And at the time he was putting it up, I was the new pastor at the time. And for years, it was 1993, and I never had a dash. It was just 1993. <laughs> and then, you know, in 2001, when I left, they gave me a dash. And I, I remember as we was building this board feet, it went on and on and on and on and on. And on. I said, man, well, I mean, how come it's so long? He said, Charles, there's going to be some others who come after you. <laughs> That's true. There will be others who come after us. Your Methodist Hospital has had over 33,000 people admitted with COVID. Just the Methodist Hospital. Fortunately, we've lost one out of 10. We've lost 3,500 people out of 35,000 admissions. And you know, we don't know what this day brings. This is the only August 7th of 2022 that will ever be. This is it. I remember years ago I was doing a wedding for a family. Not here but at another church. And it was a beautiful wedding. Just gorgeous as could be. And the cameraman was taking his pictures right and left. Doing all the things you do to get, you know, family here, family here. You know, need the parents here, need the bride here, need the groom there. And when they home, all of a sudden they discovered to their surprise that the cameraman had no film in his camera. And so they decided to meet back a month later and try to recreate the wedding. Well, that couldn't be recreated because some of the people who were at the wedding couldn't come back. And then, of course, you know, it was like after the fact. You know, it's so much. Life is so much. You and I are in a place where we have a soul. So how is it? I'm here to tell you that God wants more. I'm also here to say that we want more. So if God wants more and we want more, then why don't we get more? And the way we can get more is by washing our hands, by ceasing to do evil, do good, protecting the orphan, eating the poor, Doing the kinds of things that God knows really needs to be done. Not just going through the motion, but really doing it. And also knowing to be ready. Because this may be the day we find ourselves in a different world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come now to time of the Holy Communion, and uh, I'd like to invite the persons who are going to assist with that to come forward at this time, if you would. As you know, we have an open communion table, which means that whether you're a member of this church or not, whether you are a part of this congregation or not, you're welcome to receive the sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is his supper. He said to us very clearly, he said, I want you to remember me. And the way I want you to remember me is with the bread and with the juice. And so today we have the bread, which represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, symbolically as it is. And we have the juice, which represents the wine, which represents his blood that he gave for us. What I'd like to do at the proper time with the, with the closing of this prayer is for you to come forward and to receive the sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ and at the same time be filled with his presence, knowing that when you leave here, you leave with symbols, presence of the body and the blood of Christ within your soul. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving God, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. But we also lift up to you the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in both the symbols of the bread and the symbols of the juice as it fills us and helps us as we leave this place knowing that we're empowered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
kidding. We invite you to come forward to the receiving of the sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Christ. Thank you for coming today. Huh? Thank you for coming. Jesus Christ. This has truly been a remarkable day and a remarkable service. I want to say a special word of appreciation to each of you and the friendships that I've had with each of you through the years. Also, I want to say what a special blessing it is to be here in this sanctuary. One of the most beautiful rooms in all the world with Gabriel Leora windows and the beautiful things that go. But the things that makes this church is not its building, it's people. And I'd have people when I was here come from out of town and say, I'd love to see your church. 
I said, well, you'll need to come on Sunday because that's when you see the people. <laughs> and that's exactly what you represent. Today, you represent God. And today, as you leave here, may you know that God wants the very best for you and that God wants you to be happy and that it's time to integrate your life. Not just have life work balance, but to integrate it and do what you can to make it work so that God's blessings can fall over you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. We have a hymn. Yes. Would you all have everyone please stand and turn to 133, if you'd like to use the hymnal, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let's sing together. In the name of God, go in the knowledge and in the presence of knowing that you're an empowered people. And as you leave this place, leave the way the wise men left the manger at Bethlehem, taking a way home different than the way you came. Amen. Lord, I want you to know that you baptized.